What is going on guys? Dakota from Decal Well Photography. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be going over a specific film family that I really, really have grown to love over the past eight months of shooting film. We're talking about the Cine Steel family. So I started a new series on my channel here where we're gonna go through each film family and break down the specifics of each of the films, the color science, uh, the particulars when shooting, when you should and shouldn't shoot the film. I'm really excited to do something like this and kind of help out first time shooters and kind of explain some of the questions that I maybe had when I first started film. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Also guys, make sure you watch to the end of the video for a chance to be entered in our raffle because I'm going to be giving away some film today. Cine Steel is a motion picture film that has been modified so that it can be developed with the same C41 process that standard color film uses. Cine Steel has four different film stocks in their portfolio. The 50D, the new 400D, the 800T, and the BWXX black and white. During this video, I'll be going over the different color science from the films, the characteristics, how to and when to shoot with the film, as well as just my personal thoughts too. Before we get into my thoughts on each film and the picture examples, I wanna go ahead and highlight four things that you should remember throughout this video. One, the rimjet layer. Two, halation. Three, the Kelvin color temperature. And four, exposure latitude. If you already have a good understanding of these items and want to jump into the photos and BTS portion of the video, go ahead and fast forward it to this timestamp below. Let's start with the rimjet layer. This is a protective layer on base motion picture film that protects it from light piping, base scratches, static, and halation of highlights in the exposure. So the key word in that definition was halation. So halation is the reflection of bright points of light off the film's base and or the pressure plate causing a glow in the overexposed highlights on the image. I found a cool image online that will help me break this down for first time shooters. I wish I actually had this when I started. All right, so the thick black line represents your camera body, okay? It could be whatever camera that you have, but the thick black line represents your camera body. Next, you have your film stock, which is your blue, green, and red emulsion layers, okay? And then you finally have that thinner black layer that's your anti-halation backing or the rimjet layer, all right? So with that being said, the rimjet layer, it absorbs light when it passes through the emulsion layers. But for cine steel films, that doesn't have a rimjet layer. So cine steel films don't have rimjet layers at all. So the meaning that all that would be absorbed light, it then bounces back through the emulsion layers, creating that image that gives that halo light glow. I want to highlight the Kelvin temperature chart. Throughout the video, we're gonna be using words like daylight balance or tungsten balance. And I want you all to have a general understanding of which film falls on what portion of the scale as it gives you some extra assistance when deciding on what and when to shoot with. And finally, exposure latitude is the extent of which a light sensitive material can be overexposed or underexposed and still achieve the acceptable result. So exposing your image with your camera settings can make or break your photo. It's super important to try to get your camera settings right on scene so you can do less work when you get home and post, especially when you're dealing with film. Most cine still stocks have pretty good exposure latitude. All right, this means that you could take some photos, overexpose some of the photos, and still get a decent shot. And we're gonna talk more about that later on in the film. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first film stock. Cine Steel 50D is an ISO 50 speed daylight balance color negative motion picture film. The one thing I can appreciate about this film stock is the exposure latitude. When overexposing this film by a stop or two, it still produces a pretty usable image. Another important factor that I love about this film is that it's pretty much no grain on any of the images. And that goes for either 35 millimeter or shooting on 120. I personally absolutely love the stunning pastel colors that this film produces. I think it really gives you the best cinematic look out of the three color film stocks from Cine Steel. With that being said, since 50D is a lower ISO film stock, it needs a lot of light to produce the best quality images. I also want to mention that like the images on the screen, you do experience halation when shooting 50D at in-focus overexposed highlights. This film works best 
when the most sun is available, but that doesn't mean you can't shoot in other conditions and at other ISOs. I shot my first roll of CineSteel 50D back when it was spring and it was nothing but rain and clouds in the sky all day long, so no sun at all. It was on the 120 for my Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2, and these photos were shot right at box speed of 50. Knowing what I know now, I would have rated this film in my camera at 200 ISO and then had my lab push it two stops for some extra light to combat that heavy overcast day. I like the pictures and it gives a grittier dark cinematic version to when the sun is actually present. With most color film, but especially true for CineSteel 50D, the lighting conditions are extremely important to what type of image you want to produce. With this being said, the daylight balance film has the ability to accurately reflect tones beautifully. This film falls within the 55K on the Kelvin temperature chart, putting it pretty much smack dab in the middle of the spectrum with the green and the blues corresponding all really nicely with natural sunlight. So when you shoot 50D within this range or a scene with daylight color temperature, it'll give you amazing accurate colors, some vivid and really detailed replication of the subject that you created. On the other hand, if you take this film into a situation like my overcast day I showed earlier and not provide sufficient exposure compensation to make up for the lack of natural sunlight, then you get more of those grittier light examples. Underexposing this film, in my opinion, is not ever an option. Overall, I'm trying to use this film more as I'm guilty of passing it up and going straight to CineSteel 800T for a lot of my shots. But 50D, like I mentioned, provides the most cinematic look at a CineSteel's color lineup, and I will try my best to use it more often. CineSteel 400D is a fine grain daylight balanced color negative film that delivers a soft color palette with natural saturation and rich warm tones. This film just released this year and was really hard to get a hold of. I honestly didn't get my first roll till maybe about August or so. But Cindy still adding a 400 ISO film to their catalog was a huge, huge plus since it's such a big jump from ISO 50D to 800T, right? So that's about four stops of light in between, I believe. Being able to have a daylight balance 400 ISO film makes it perfect for indoor and outdoor usage. Like Cindy still 50D, it has incredible exposure latitude. When exposed properly, the 400 ISO has really fine grain, but you still get noticeable in focus over uh, exposed highlights, just like when you're shooting in direct sunlight for the halation. Going back to the color palette that I mentioned earlier, the warmth of this film reminds me a lot of Kodak Gold. Not as golden and with the yellows being in focus, but more so like the brownish, uh, brown, brownish bronze color with the reds being top priority. The reds with this film render quite well, and the brown and copper warmth for these images, it really gives that nostalgic nod to film photos. I absolutely love the fact that I don't have to go straight to 800T now when I wanna go shoot in the studio. Again, 400D can be pushed quite a few stops and it still looks good. But like for this instance, when I'm shooting indoors and there's enough natural light for proper exposure, I can go get a versatile ISO daylight balance film 400D and use that instead of loading up 800T and putting on a warming filter for, you know, proper light balance. But we'll talk about warming filters and all that stuff later in the video. I also thought I'd throw in some of my overcast day portraits that I took while at box speed. Like I mentioned with 50D, with more color film, you should err more on the side of overexposure at its best because you end up getting some muddy looking images when they're underexposed. Also, that bronze warmth that I mentioned earlier, I really like how it highlights with melanated skin. It looks really nice on darker skin. I definitely am a fan of this new color film. I have some videos coming up soon that highlights 400D and some of the various situations such as shooting indoors, outdoors, at night, and being pushed during development. So be on the lookout for that video and my blog article. If you've been watching my channel since I started my film journey eight months ago, then you know CineSteel 800T is by far my favorite film stock. Beautiful halation, it has that tungsten balanced lighting that is designed for various images and situations, as well as that magical film grain that gets added to your images. 
I shot this film in a plethora of situations this year, so we're just gonna start with the condition that we're all used to seeing it in, and that is low light and night shooting. Tungsten Balance film is designed to shine in low light. It really gives your images that cool look in low light that I have come to try to replicate in digital cameras for over like a year or so. Like any film or on digital camera at night, you aren't going to be shooting directly in pitch black darkness and expecting a good looking image. So at night when shooting, I tend to find the light sources like string lights or LED signs. Uh, not only does it add another dynamic to your photo, but that tungsten color balance of the 800T, it really works well with artificial lighting. You will also notice those red halos and blooming effects on light sources within your frame. I tend to always rate this film at ISO 800 and then compensate my other settings on camera properly. I do hear that it performs well at 500 ISO, and I'll probably give that a try eventually as well. But like other color cine steel films, when this is underexposed, it makes for a muddy and high rough grain image like the stuff you're seeing on the screen right now. I personally like this aesthetic though. I enjoy the green lighting that was present at the time of the scene, especially when combined with that 800T color science. I also really like the grain aspect of these images. Uh, but knowing what I know now, I would have just adjusted my shutter speed and grabbed the shutter release cable and a tripod, or I would have had this pushed by my film lab for some extra light on the images. I also want to note that it's totally fine with liking an image that isn't the norm for how you should shoot with film, but it's equally important to recognize your mistakes and knowing how you could correct them in the future. Another reason why I absolutely adore 800T is because it's known for its amazing latitude. You can get a wide range of tones in your shadows and highlights in your images when it's properly exposed. The highlights are not just pitch black and they also contain details in various shades. The same is true for the highlights. Things just don't get blown out and you'll still get some awesome detail within your highlight. You don't often see 800T being used during the daytime, but over the past few months, I made it a habit to shoot more during the day. Remember, just because that tungsten balance is there doesn't mean that you have to only shoot it at night, but you need to be aware of the color signs if you are shooting in direct sun. The images I'm showing on the screen right now were shot with 800T during the day. When shooting during the day with 800T, the colors of the film are shifted towards a blue or teal looking color. And the film community will have different opinions on this, but personally, I really like the color shift. I think it's cool as hell. And depending on the look you're going for, it makes for some really nice images. I can see this being utilized for some cinematic like landscape shots out in the mountains somewhere. So maybe I'll uh, take this out west once and uh, give it a shot as well. But if you want your 800T to have that normal daylight balance color science, you're gonna wanna get a warming film to attach to your lens. I own the Tiffin 85C, and I'm gonna throw some images on the screen comparing some of the regular Cine Steel shots with the warming filter as well. I also want to point out that the difference in the color balance between shots taken with and without the filter depends on the time of day and the scene. For example, I shot these images of Pearl back in June during golden hour using Cine Steel 800T. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the golden rays from the sun acted like a makeshift warming filter. The skin tones are still a little bit cool, just a tiny bit, but overall the images seem to have gotten close to that daylight balance temperature that we are looking for. Either way, whether you're shooting 800T with or without a warming filter during the day, you're going to get some pretty sick looking results. It all depends on your autistic vision and your taste. Cine Steel BWXX is a classic panchromatic black and white negative film for both outdoor and studio use. It has a variable base ISO of 250 under daylight and 200 under tungsten lighting. If you're looking for a punchy black and white film with heavy contrast, it's worth giving this film a try. When I see this film, I think of old classic black and white movies that I'd watch with my parents back in the day. These films were dark, gritty, and punchy, which is everything this film produces. Though the shadows are quite dark, the midtones of this film are smooth with an appealing silver tone. Highlights though can become a little bit overexposed if you don't pay attention to your exposure. You should be able to preserve most of the detail even if you're shooting in bright daylight. I mentioned that BWXX is a variable ISO film. 
The previous images on the screen were rated at 200 because at the time I didn't realize that 250 was for daylight and 200 ISO was for tungsten. But these images of Isabella that are up now are all rated at 250 during the bright sunlight day. It performs well at 250 ISO when shooting in direct sunlight as you're seeing right now. I have seen videos online of photographers pushing this film to 1600. I haven't personally tried that myself, but I will in the future because the results are pretty damn good. But like I mentioned earlier about blown out highlights, this film doesn't seem to be too forgiving when it comes to overexposure. I know most black and white films like the Ilford brand definitely gives you a little bit more latitude when you're overexposing a bit, but BWXX not so much. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting your metering spot on or very close to so you aren't dealing with a mix of blown out highlights and inky blacks, especially if you're shooting portraits all the time. I love how visible the grain is for both 35mm and 120. The grain feels appropriate, especially when you consider the punchy look that this high contrast black and white film gives. In the future, I'm going to print out some images of my BWXX portraits and really see how the grain incorporates with the shadows of the images on printed paper. Quality wise, the BWXX film grain on 120 looks a lot less prominent compared to 135, but regardless of that observation, they both look really good. In the future, I'm gonna use this film for more documentary purposes, um, as well as some street photography to really get a feel for what this can do. I love Delta 3200. I really love T-Max 3200. I love the HP5 as well. But for black and white portraits so far this year, Cine Steel BWXX is unmatched in the top of my black and white film list. All four of these films bring something unique and different to the table. Since starting my film journey eight months ago, I have become a fan of the Cine Steel family as these film stocks really highlight the best of why I wanted to get into film in the first place. Let me know in the comments which Cine Steel film you prefer or if you want to use a specific one. Also guys, raffle time. I'll be giving away two rows of Cine Steel film for either 35 or 120 to two lucky folks. Just make sure that you like the video, you subscribe to the channel, as well as comment below your thoughts on the Cine Steel film brand and what format and film you would like to use if you won. Winners will be announced on my IG story on the 16th of December. Thank you all again and I hope you have a fantastic holiday. Peace.